And welcome back, Haskey here with another music note guide for the one and only Banjo-Kazooie. Today's episode is on Gobi's Valley. It has been a while. Freeze Easy Peak happened just under two years ago, somehow, some way. But not to worry, we are on schedule to finish these, this here music note guide by the time I turn 40 years old. Just kidding, of course. Anyway, Gobi's Valley. Not really my favorite level. And uh, probably just because it's a, a desert, <laughs> honestly. It just doesn't... Uh, whenever I'm playing games, like, the last thing that runs through my head is, man, I could really go for a desert level right now, you know? But seriously, um, yeah, Gobi's Valley isn't too bad as far as music notes go. Um, I think there are some gotchas, if you will. Uh, for one, you need um, the Beak Bomb ability, which is that, that ability where when you're flying, you press the B button and you go flying forward and you can, you know damage enemies and, and break stuff. Uh, you, you will need that in this level in order to get into one of the pyramids. Actually, we're going to go right there right now. Look at that. Look at that. So we'll just fling our bodies at this target here, smash into it and open the door. Interesting, interesting door system. Interesting doorbell mechanics. But yeah, if you, uh, if you don't have that ability, you'll probably need to go get it from, that was from Freeze Easy Peak. Um, if, if you're doing the levels in order, you'll likely already have it, but since you can do the levels out of order, it is certainly possible that you can arrive at this level without that ability. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure there's some speedrunner way where you can, I don't know, get outside the map and hit the loading zone somehow, um, without the Beak Bomb ability, but I, I don't know of a way. I, I've never looked that up. I, I have no idea how to do it. Uh, I'd be shocked if there wasn't a way, but, um, yeah. So if you don't have it, you'll probably want to just stop, stop what you're doing Head back to Freeze Easy Peak, pick that up, and then come back and start over. Probably should have said that earlier, sorry. Don't be mad. Don't be mad. Anyway, moving on. We're going to run up here onto the head of this Sphinx. This <laughs> living living Sphinx with a building inside, I don't know. Creature in the shape of a Sphinx. And we're going to open the door by <laughs> shooting him in the nose. More... more more interesting door mechanics. Shoot the guy in the nose, open the building. And I, I don't know if you caught that pro gamer move right there, but you can shoot both sides of his nose from, from one side. That's just me showing off, though. Showing off how good I am at Banjo-Kazooie. But now that we're inside, there's going to be four music notes on the bottom floor, one in each corner. And I think three floating on the magic carpets. And actually, now that I'm watching this, like, this very second, I didn't really think about this, but in, in the far corners, like, you can see it right here. You, you don't, you can't see the music notes. They're too far away. They're cold. See, they're, like, disappeared, right? So now that I've gotten closer, you can, you can see them appear. So, um, I kind of, I kind of felt like this room was pretty straightforward, like, one in each corner. But I, I guess you could, you could actually miss them because you, you might look down there and be like, oh, yeah, there's nothing there. And then walk out. So that's, uh. Be careful of that, I suppose. And back outside. Alrighty, what's next? Um, more buildings. More buildings, that's for sure. In fact, um, I, I've never counted. Certainly never counted before, but I, I wouldn't be surprised at all to find out that Gobi's Valley was, you know, the one level in Banjo-Kazooie that had the most uh, sub-areas, you know, places you go inside, <laughs> grab some stuff and come out. Um, and unfortunately, that kind of makes it difficult for finding music notes, you know. It's it's difficult to know. <laughs> I mean, you can't look at a, a place, you know, a building, and be like, oh yeah, that, that's that been cleared out. Like, are you sure? Like, are, did you check every corner? That just kind of makes it a little bit rough. It doesn't help that, you know, most of them look the same, and the colors of Gobi's Valley are all kind of the same. It's kind of pretty easy to get spun around, and think you've been in a place where you really haven't. So anyway, takeaway from that is don't get lost. Do your best, don't get lost. I would say uh, pay attention to what doors have been opened and what doors haven't, but <laughs> I just came out of, you know, one of the buildings that well, the door closes itself. So that certainly doesn't help. And we're going to hop over here and feed these statues, these sphinxes. Sphinx? Sphinxes? I don't know, but they're going to show their gratitude by 
raising this pyramid out of the earth. Pretty cool of them. Especially because there are music notes inside. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about this maze here in just a few seconds. But uh, it's probably one of the scarier parts of the level, if there is one. That maze being inside the pyramid. That is, excuse me. So I think there's three of these guys. I mean, they're hard to miss. Whether there's three or four. Feed them. They hunger. And fed. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Thank you for the pyramid. Thank you, Sphinx Eye. Anyway, that's that's the maze there. We'll race on up there and, and talk about this a little bit more. And here we go, entering the pyramid maze now. Uh, so this this spot's kind of sketchy. Um, the thing to note about this this spot in the level is when you enter the maze itself, the door closes behind you and you have one minute to make your way through. Um, if you don't make it, if the timer runs out, you will, in fact, die. You will die instantly. You'll lose your progress. All the music notes are gone. You have to start over. So that's a little bit stressful. Not a whole lot of stuff like this in Banjo-Kazooie. But um, having said that, I have never in any shape or form memorized this layout as, as you watch me go back and forth and not really know which way to go. I, I have no idea how to get through this maze. I wing it. I, I wing it every single time. So um, the, the good thing about that maze is there are no music notes in the maze itself, like the, the core of the maze. There's some music notes in like the, the entrance, like the, the, the entrance corridor and the exit. Uh, otherwise, there's really not a whole lot going on in the maze itself. There's, there's a, a Gruntelda switch in there that you would have to get uh, to 100% the game um, and maybe some mumbo tokens. I don't, I don't really remember, but um, yeah, no music notes, no um, honeycomb pieces or uh, honeycomb rings. Uh, so you just you just kind of run through it and don't really stress about it. Don't worry about it. Anyway, moving forward, I'm gonna grab those shoes. I actually I actually don't remember what they're called now that I think about it. I'm gonna I'm gonna call them super sneakers. And if they were not called super sneakers in reality, I feel like it was a, a missed opportunity. But obviously, you're gonna need them to go fast enough to reach the hatch on top of this structure. Um, I'm grabbing the music notes as I go up. But I think you'll see, yeah, it's kind of close there. Um, it, it might be a better idea. Well, I don't know. It, it's not like there's any risk to that. If you don't make it, you just try again. But uh, if you have to skip the music notes to cut the corners a little bit tighter, uh, that might help you get up and you know down inside fast enough. But it looks like we were able to grab the music notes and get into the building with just barely enough time. So I'm going to grab that uh, puzzle piece there to open the door. That is how you open that and uh, drain the water out of this thing that was somehow filled with it. And we'll grab the four music notes and head back outside. All right, back outside now. We're going to wrap around the back side of this building and grab the other pair of Banjo-Kazooie shoes. I, I do remember the name of these <laughs> boots, the waiting boots. Not nearly as cool as Super Sneakers, but I digress. Uh, I guess you don't necessarily need these unlocked in order to get all of the music notes on this level. Uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of trying to think about ways you could you know mess up this stage. Uh, in the case of we were talking about the the Beak Bomb ability a little bit earlier and how you needed it to, in order to get into that one pyramid. Um, I guess with the waiting boots, you, you could, if you didn't have it unlocked somehow, if you somehow didn't have it unlocked, you could just jump into the sand. It's not like it kills you instantly. Uh, you can hop in, grab a few notes, take the damage, hop out, find a way to heal yourself, and just continue that until you picked up all the music notes. I've never tried that. Um, I've always had the boots unlocked at this point in the game. And I guess as, as far as that goes, uh, if you if you somehow have made it this far without the waiting boots unlocked, you probably should just, you know, <laughs> that was back in Bubble Gloop Swamp. You should go back and unlock those but anyway i'm gonna swim down here pick up these music notes this this area of course this this moat this this channel of course was filled up with water after we went into that uh that other building a few seconds ago um so you'll need to do that in order to fill up that i, I think you can drop down there and uh just pick up the notes i think there's a flight pad down there honestly yeah i think i just saw it 
I think I just saw it for like a frame there. Um, but obviously easier just to fill it up with water and swim. Much less stress. Much less boiling sand. Anyway, though. And holy cow, we're pretty much done with this already. Uh, we're just waiting for the, <laughs> the last five music notes. You have to ride this, this magical carpet. Go on a magical carpet ride. Uh, and there's a, there's a door over here. A certain secret door that will actually be open in my playthrough here. That's for a different video, though. That's a secret. That doesn't concern you. But anyway, that's 100 notes. Gobi's Valley. That wasn't too bad, right? I think the I think the only part here that is really kind of rough, and it's more of a mental thing, I think, <laughs> than than actually being hard, is that that pyramid maze. Like whenever you go in there, you go, holy moly, I have to get through this in 60 seconds, and if I mess this up, I have to start over. Um, I I think I don't really think it's that bad. Um, like I said, I have no idea how to get through that maze, and uh, I usually make it through in 30 seconds out of the 60 seconds. Uh, without even really trying so um, if it's if it's really bothering you I, I'd say try to do it first um, try to tack tackle that first so if you do mess up and you die um, well you just you didn't really waste a whole lot of time don't don't wait for like the final music notes to do that you know don't don't go running around for 15 or 20 minutes and then run in there and just die just like that that would be somewhat tragic but anyway looks like I'm running out of video past me is absolutely beelining it for Mad Monster Mansion as as everything goes black there. Guess guess that was it. That was the end of the video. Uh, so anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, I appreciate you hanging out. I hope you learned something. If you were missing a few music, no music notes, I hope you were able to pick those up and 100% Gobi's Valley. Uh, stay tuned for Mad Monster Mansion. That one's coming up next, and I will see you in the next video.